The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you Pac Wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pac Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Pac Mentality Poppins Podcast. I'm your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt. And we're switching it up on this episode. The skip, he's floating around somewhere up here in WB. So we're going to go straight to an interview. And today, I'm joined by 2019 All American Hayden Hiley. Hayden, Welcome back to the podcast. It's been a long time since we've had you on. Yeah, it's good to be here, Brian. Our first post NCAA championship podcast, and we're going to come in hot. Um, there's been a decision on a lot of people's minds, some recent controversy, and just something most people have wanted to get your opinion on for some time now. Philadelphia Eagles letting Nick Foles sign with the Jaguars. Good move, right move. What do you think? It's a tough move because I think you lose either way. Um, I think you've got two really great quarterbacks and you know you, you, there's just not enough room to keep both of them at this point in time and so you want to hold on to the guy that brought Philadelphia championship after all these years and so i mean i think it's a lot more risky move to keep Foles and let Wentz go than it would be just to keep Wentz so i have all faith in, in Carson Wentz so I, i'm i'm ready to go and i support their decisions it's good analysis now you told me you've been a huge eagle fan since right before they won the super bowl so <laughs> okay <laughs> but i know you're a big nfl guy what about college football well obviously i root for the pack i mean i uh i think growing up i was big into college football but i think my eagles fandom probably began once they lost to the patriots in the super bowl all those years ago uh, i was a big brian dawkins fan and you know, Donovan McNabb was pretty good too before, you know, he got into some controversies. But, uh, yeah, big Eagles fan, big pack fan. Uh, I love it all. I think, uh, the fall season is really good because we train really hard and on the weekends you get to chill out a little bit after you're done working out. And so usually once we're done hitting the track, I'll just kind of go to the sofa and watch football all weekend. I was going to say, as a student athlete here at NC State on the wrestling team, college football is going on during the preseason of wrestling. How much do you guys get to go over to Carter Finley and watch the Wolfpack on Saturdays before wrestling takes over every weekend? Well, I would say that uh, we pretty much get every chance to to go to the football games um September and October for the most part. Um just because, you know, we're usually done with our preseason workouts by, you know, 11 or so, and we can get over to Carter Finley and watch the games and I know that's big. Whenever we have recruiting weekends, we'll all, all go there with the incoming recruits and you know, they get to see how cool NC State fans are and, and how loud they get. And I think it's a good sell for them to be able to go to Carter Finley. And, you know, we obviously are at uh, Carter Finley a lot, too, running up the stairs yeah. during preseason. <laughs> so I can say I pretty much uh, explored every single step of that stadium. A little different perspective running up and down those stairs, I'm sure, than on yeah. game days. But more current events. Thoughts on WrestleMania. Well, I didn't get get to watch WrestleMania. It was I think a I was long watching. show this year. Yeah, I know uh, John Cena came out. Yeah. Um, what was he called? The Professor Thugmaster. Thugonomics. The Thugonomic. The Pre- Professor Thugonomics. So that was pretty cool. I mean, I don't have any desires to do anything like that. I, I don't think my uh, body type really suits. I don't think they're looking for many 5'7 guys since uh, Rey Mysterio has been done. But um, no, that, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I like watching... Um, you know, Triple H do do his thing. It's kind of cool. I kind of got my one of my nicknames from Triple H. Who just called me Double H. So I got to say you have that. a lot of Nick H H mania, maybe yeah. Hulkamania there too. So <laughs> yep. you know a lot of times. But I could talk football and pro wrestling all day, and I know you could talk wrestling all day. So let's get into it. This past season, you repeated as the ACC champion and became only the third wrestler in school history to earn All American honors as both a freshman and sophomore. Last year, NCAA finals. This year, fourth place in March. Individually, what were your thoughts on the past season for yourself? Well, I think it started out up and down. I know the beginning of the year, I, I wrestled pretty well at the first tournament I went to at the Hokie Open. And then, you know, I went and did the U23 World Championships. And that sort of was a disaster for me almost. I mean, I, I wrestled well, but it just I didn't come home with anything special. And then, 
coming home from that, um, I had spent all this time trying to peak for that tournament. And like the next month or so, once I got back, it was like really hard to get back in my groove. And I took, took a few losses and, you know, it's weird because I mean, I went through my whole freshman year, you know, without a blemish. And then next, you know, we're in December and I've got two losses already. So I know I had to really dig deep at that point in time. I I think I, I leaned on my coaches for that support and, you know, things just weren't clicking. And I, I wasn't scoring on my feet. I, uh, you know, my conditioning was fine. That wasn't an issue, but I just wasn't scoring. And, you know, I wasn't looking very good. And, and that was a time where I needed to kind of take a step back and, you know, let out a deep breath. And, you know, that's the season's not made in December. It's made in March. So, you know, I just had to keep, keep going with the course that I was on and I was, I was going to, you know, find some success. And, I don't believe I I changed up too much. I took a little bit of time off, I think, over that Christmas break. But once I got back from Christmas breaks, things started to click a little bit more, and I started to get back into my groove, and I started to really improve throughout the year. And, you know, I thought I had a really good postseason. I thought I wrestling itself, I looked really, really good. It's just, you know, I, I ran into uh, to a buzzsaw of a bracket, um, you know, wrestled my hardest, but, you know, I just didn't get the results that, that were there and I was really close. I mean, there's a couple of just takedowns here and there that could have, you know, been the difference between winning that tournament. But, you know, I, I know that you can't look back on those type of things and, and make excuses about it. I mean, I just know I got to get better in, in order to win that tournament next year. Covered a lot. I was going to cover all of those points. You just <laughs> made, so good follow. But uh, going back to the start of the season, you and Sean Foz, and before we get started over under who weighs more right now, you or Sean. We actually did do some weight checks, I think, last week, and he is, I think, like maybe five or six pounds less than I am. So I still have him. There was a point, this is a really funny story, there was a point last year during the summer, I think it was August, and all of our wrestlers from 125 through 157 were all within five pounds of each other. So I stayed pretty light. And pretty lean throughout the year, just because it's it's a little bit harder for me to cut weight. Um, I don't I don't lose as much weight compared to you know some of the other guys like Sean. And, uh, just my frame's not really built for that, so I like to stay lean. I'd probably stay around you know 163 throughout the year. And Sean was obviously up in the up in the 50s. Tariq was huge up in the 50s. Uh, you know the Morris brothers were right around my weight too, and Oliver was a little bit heavier than I was at that point. So we were all within about five pounds of each other. So it was a really good uh, training environment. It's, it's going to be somewhat similar right now. I think Tariq said bulk season is starting now. Yeah. They're all trying to catch up to you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But uh, it's kind of cool because, you know, you don't usually see those guys in, in the season. You don't really practice with them. But now that Tariq's uh, a little bit heavier and it's it's a good, you know, mesh of training partners, you get a different feel. Besides that Italy trip with NC State last season, the trip to Romania for U23s, that was your first international trip for wrestling. And off the mat, how was the experience? Did you guys even get to take the time to experience Romania and its culture? A little bit. Um, my mom went there, and uh, she got to do a lot of touring. Uh, it was a very condensed trip just because we were missing classes and stuff like that. It's not the most ideal circumstances because it's right in the middle of November, but uh, my mom got to do a lot of that stuff. And then once I was on wrestling, I got to explore a little bit of Bucharest and it was, it was really cool. I, I think I would have liked to maybe, you know, have that trip in the summer just because it would have been a little bit longer trip. You could maybe go around and see some different stuff like Dracula's castle, but I didn't get to do that, but my mom took some pictures and that's what I had to settle for. And we talked about international wrestling. They really don't care what the college schedule is like. Looking back now, how hard was it for you and Sean? Broke you guys kind of broke up your college season. Had to do that wrestling a different style. Had to travel back. You suffered a little bit of an injury too that mm-hmm. we really didn't talk about. Just how was that experience in your college season to do that while you weren't redshirting? Well, looking back on it now, it was probably not for the best for me to be competing. I mean, like uh, that whole trip and and getting ready for that tournament didn't really allow me to be all that good in December, which. I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter how great you are in December, but, you know, it was really tough. I mean, you, we had a plan in place and I really trusted that. And, you know, we trained freestyle up uh, for like a few weeks beforehand, but, you know, we're here to be college wrestlers. So we didn't get away from folk style either. So, you know, we went through preseason, we're practicing folk style. Then probably with a month before Romania, we, uh, started, you know, getting back to freestyle and that transition was pretty hard, I thought. 
I mean, I don't, I don't mind going from folk style to freestyle just because, you know, there's, I mean, there's still a lot of, of neutral wrestling, but then once you go and you, you prepare all that time to peak for, you know, the U23s and you come back, um, and you're right in the heart of the season. So, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of time where we could take off. And that was probably an issue for me just because, you know, I hurt my knee when I was out there in Romania in my last match that I wrestled. And so I got back and I was trying to, you know, get ready for the folk style season. And I don't want to say I, I jumped back into things too quickly. I think I just underestimated how hard it was going to be. And I think, you know, my month of December probably showed that. He recovered second ACC championship in as many seasons and more importantly, an ACC team title as well. In addition to the regular season title, both of those wins coming up at Virginia Tech. How satisfying was it to win the ACC championship as a team this season? It was really satisfying just because of, you know, like my season had some ups, ups and downs. We had some peaks and pits as a team. And so for us to be able to win not only the dual championships, but, but come around and, and win the overall championship. I mean, that's the goals that we set whenever we were having a, a rough stretch during the season. Whenever we dropped that dual meet to pit, we had to really come together and, and realize what our goals were. And everybody in the room said they want to be an ACC dual champion, and ACC team champion. So, you know, what we were doing, I don't think lined up with those goals. And I think it took that loss for us to really kind of take a step back and, and focus on what we need to be doing. And I think that showed a lot about our team in that point in time. And, you know, we knew that we would have a young team this year and we needed guys to step up. And I think we had a lot of guys, you know, kind of break through in that moment and, and step up as leaders. And we had a really great stretch there. I mean, we beat UNC, Virginia Tech, and then went to ACC's and you know, we didn't wrestle like lights out, but I mean, we we wrestled good enough to win, obviously. And so that was a really cool stretch to be a part of. I think we grew a lot as a team in that point in time. And, uh, you know, we didn't get the results we, we were looking for at NCAAs as a team. But I mean, for how, how dire some of the things got during the year, I think, you know, it, it was a, a pretty a pretty solid finish out to the season just because of where we were at at one point. I joked about some controversy to start this podcast. So of course, now we got to get into the NCAA championships and people just want to hear your opinion. Um, last year, you got the number one overall seed going undefeated. This year, you were fifth. I made I'm very biased, but I thought that was a little low. And mm -hmm. you don't seem like Kobe or Michael Jordan where it takes something to piss you off and you, mm -hmm. it gets motivated. But as wrestlers, do you guys care what seeds you are? What did you think of yours, or did you just know it doesn't matter? Well, I, I know going into that whole bracket process, in my head, I'm like, all right, I'll probably be the three or the four. I think there's probably a, a coin flip about what it's going to be. And and then I saw the bracket, I'm like, five? I had not even put that through my thought process. Like, you think, I mean, like, people always say, like, I don't care what seed I get. But you're, you're thinking about it because, you know, you don't know who you're going to wrestle or things like that. So... In my head, I was probably going to be a three or the four, and I was fine with either one of them. And the fifth, I was like, okay, I mean, this is pretty much the same as being the four seed. I mean, if you think about it, it, it really is. So, you know, I'm not like taken back by anything. I kind of figured that would be one of the routes taken as the four. And once I got the five, you know, it, it's similar. So, you know, I don't get mad about that thing. So I, I thought it was deserving because I didn't have a very consistent season and I didn't really take out anybody that was within the top five. So at that point, my best win was probably, you know, Romani of Pitt twice and the Ohio State kid. So, I mean, I'm realistic. I knew I didn't have the greatest regular season. I had some opportunities. I, I had a match against the, uh, who ended up being the two seed and I dropped that. So, you know, I thought it was pretty fair. Uh, I, I didn't think I got, you know, hose or anything like that. And, just going right into that semifinal match with Jason Olf of Penn State. Rematch of last year's final. So now that it has happened, do you like instant replay and challenges in college wrestling? Well, I'm, I mean, I'd be lying if I said that kind of whole match didn't play through my head because it does. I mean, every day you think about, all right, what exactly happened? What could I have done more? And, I mean, I, I thought I wrestled lights out in that match. I thought I was doing really well. And even off the, the first whistle, he got into his best shot. And I was able to scramble out of it. And I was like, if I am out scrambling Nolf right now, I mean, I'm going to win this match. And, you know, the first period comes to a close and I'm in on a really good shot. And 
you know, we get into another scramble again and I'm kind of out scrambling him and I'm thinking, all right, if I'm beating him at his best game, then I'm just going to win this match. And, you know, the five seconds starts ticking down and I get behind him on the waist and I thought I had two. And then they go to, to replay. And I mean, I, I think I understand what they called. I think it was, you know, I, I got behind him and he, they gave reaction time for him to get up because you know, I thought it was a rear standing position and usually in rear standing, they don't give reaction time. So I'm thinking in my head, all right, I've got two. But, you know, whenever we started scrambling, I, I think the ref, you know, thought that we weren't in rear, rear standing. So he allowed reaction time. And so they go to that review process and I'm just sitting there kind of like standing around, you know, I had a really good first period. I just want to get this match going. And it was a long review. Process it really was. There. And I mean, in the moment too, you don't think about how long it was, but I'm sure it was I mean, well over five minutes or something like that. And so I'm just waiting. And, you know, I was prepared to hear whatever call it was. And, you know, I think I've had enough maturity over the years to just, you know, I don't I don't want to show anything during the match because I don't if if I would have got pissed off that, you know, they didn't give two, you know, I I might have been out of that match just because body language means everything to me. So. But you still have two periods left too. Yeah, you have I mean, two periods left. You got to you got to be ready to to wrestle a whole match against a guy like that. And so, you know, once they didn't give the two, I was prepared to win the match either way, just because you know I I was feeling good. I I thought that I had the upper hand in that first period, and uh, I mean second period comes around. I he timed the shot. I think he had scouted me well, and you know I went for a high C, and he just split the corner easily. And so, you know, I gave up that too, but I just kept going and kept going and. You know, I had some good opportunities to close out that match, but, you know, I, I didn't make it happen. So, you know, I might have got a screwed over on a takedown, but I don't feel like I got, you know, screwed out of the match. It's, I mean, it's a long match. It's seven minutes. And, you know, I had some good opportunities to score and I thought I wrestled really well, you know, and it just didn't work out like that. And he scored more points than I did. And at the end of the day, he got his hand raised and, you know, I think it would be cool to, to run that match back. I mean, everybody has those thoughts. Whenever you lose a match like that, you're thinking, all right, what could I have done? But, I mean, it, I wrestled a really good match, and he just scored more points than I did, and that's kind of the way I look at it. It was 3-2 in the third. Very late, you got in on a shot two right on the edge of the mat. Take us through that sequence. You didn't get that takedown, but that was another very close one. Well, yeah, looking back, I mean, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. I think I should have maybe started my last push a little bit earlier. I think um, I know cross country runners, they talk about their last kick that they go on. And sometimes they think about it, man, I could have really started a little bit earlier in that. And so I think I started my last kick where I was just kind of going, you know, all out probably with like 20 seconds left. And, you know, when I look back at that first period takedown, I was probably in on the leg with 30, 35 seconds left. And that's how long it took to take him down. And I probably should have accounted for that more. I think with Nolf, he's really tricky in that once you get to his legs, he can do a lot of different stuff and give you a lot of different feels. And, but I knew that if I could get to his leg, I thought I was going to score. I was pretty confident in that. It's just, I think looking back, I needed more time just because a guy like that, he's been in those situations. He's comfortable, comfortable there. I think for my last kick, I should have started around 40, 45 seconds. I think I would have been in enough scoring position where I could have got it at that point. But, you know, I started my last kick around 20. I got into a leg at 15 and, you know, he was able to kind of hold me out until the buzzer rang. You talk about starting late, some of your moves. And all. How do you know in a tournament how much time's left? How aware are you of the clocks? Well, you've got an inner clock in your head. And for me, I thought, I think that's one of my strengths. I can keep a, a clock really well in my head. And obviously there's some stoppages. And every time I go out of bounds, I do check the clock. I think that's a fine thing to do. I never check the clock while I'm wrestling just because I, just one, it, it shows weakness. And two, it, you never know if a guy can catch you, uh, you know, splitting your eye out for a second and he'll, he'll shoot and grab your ankle. So. For me, I don't look at a clock during, but I kind of thought in my head I probably had around 20, 25 whenever I took that shot. Um, that was my, my inner clock set. And then going back and looking at the match, I probably shot in at, I don't know, 14 or 15. But, I mean, it, it's it's one of those skill sets that you kind of have to learn as, as you go on, and I think I've done a good job at that. But, I mean, I think we went – I the last time I checked the clock, it was probably at like 40 whenever we had a stoppage, and I kind of had that running in my head. 
You might get your shot back at them in freestyle this offseason. Does freestyle change the dynamic of this matchup between you two and what has been a good couple of matches at the last two NCAAs? Well, I don't really know how the freestyle match will go. One, just because you haven't seen him in a few years go freestyle. And you don't really know what weight he's going to go. But, I mean, at this point, I, I know in freestyle, I'm just going to have to win, like, five really hard, hard matches. Because, I mean, by the time trials comes around, it's just going to be all good guys. And so, you know, you don't know if you're going to see him or or somebody else. And it, it's just going to be a really hard-fought match, no matter who you're wrestling at this point. But... Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'd love to wrestle him in freestyle. They've been really good matches for me. And, you know, I, I've i been able to solve his kind of code a little bit. I mean, I was the closest match with him for quite some time. And, you know, I, I feel like it's a good matchup uh, style for me just because I, I don't give up a whole lot of points no matter who I'm wrestling. And uh, I usually can, my defense can prevail against guys like that that want to get into a lot of scrambles. And so uh, I think freestyle... Uh, it'll be just a lot of fun just because the, there's a lot more action in freestyle, but looking forward to that if I get to wrestle him. It's always a quick recovery at the NCAAs. Almost right away, you have to switch your mind onto who's next. And a lot of people were curious how you were going to come out that final day medal rounds. How long did that loss to no fester in you? And how long did you just go, all right, got to get moving next? Well, I think it was... Probably like, I don't know. After I lost, I was, you know, you're, there's a little bit of confusion. There's some rage and you're thinking like, I mean, if, if you, if you go to the NCAAs and you record somebody's like five minutes after they lose, it's just, it's a mess. And so I, I, I don't cut, here's the thing. I don't come and bother you guys for a little while. Yeah. No other guys come and grab you. It's right just away. like the thoughts that go through your head are just yep. so ridiculous. <laughs> like, it's, it's just so funny looking back at it now, but usually for me, Whenever I lose a match like that, I just go lay down in the, in the back mats and just, I don't know, just lay down and decompress and usually just get, tell my coach, just, just give me five minutes and then I'll be fine. And so after that five minutes, I'm just, you know, I went and checked my weight for the next day and got got some dinner and I was like, all right, I, there's nothing left for me to do here. I'm just going to bed. And so I went back to the hotel and was like, I don't want to check my phone or, or do much at all. I'm just going to bed. And uh, and uh, woke up Saturday and... I mean, it, it hurt. My body hurt, but I was just like, "All right, I can I can think about my performance once I'm done with this." You know, I've got two matches to win, and after that, I can I can look back and, and see where things went wrong. And uh, Saturday, I mean, I I was warming up with Kevin, and I'm thinking to myself, "Wow, my body feels terrible." <laughs> and Pat comes up to me, he's like, "You know, how's it going, man?" I'm like, "It's going fine. My body just feels like crap." And so. Uh, I wrestled that first match and I looked really good actually. I I thought I wrestled phenomenal. And uh You got the win over Deacon of Northwestern yeah. advanced you to the third place match. Yeah, and that you know, things were click clicking in that match. I mean, I got to the third period, I had a big lead and I went on bottom and then I was thinking he was gonna cut me, but I mean I was like, All right, if if he's just gonna keep riding me and, and not really make an attempt to turn, then I I guess I'll just wait it out here on bottom and so <laughs> I was kind of saving some energy for that next match. And, um, I mean, I knew in the third and fourth match, it's going to be a war just because, I mean, every match with me and Pantaleo is just like hard to score, same body type. I was going to say, is there a better matchup of the same short, just cut guys than you and Pantaleo? Yeah, I think when it comes to like, uh, I don't know, best statures in the NCAA, I think it's probably me and him are up to the top. <laughs> And, uh, obviously I take a lot of pride in, in, in being one of the strongest guys, but I mean, he's really strong too. And so I knew it was just going to be like a, you know, one or two takedown match. And I went out and I, in my head, I'm just like, you know what? I don't, I don't have anything to lose here. I mean, I, I don't care if I get third or fourth. I mean, at, at this point it's not first. So I'm going to try to wrestle the best that I can, but I'm not going to try to wait it out and try to sneak the guy just because, I mean, I was just going to be aggressive and go out and try to, you know, throw him and do whatever. And so went out in the first period, had a good throw attempt. And then say, <laughs> you got close to that headlock. I did. Him. And, uh, you know, there's some technical things that are tweaking, but I mean, he's just a strong guy. And, you know, if I hit that a couple more times, I mean, if you have that situation play out, I might end up on top in some of those. But I mean, I got a little bit, uh, had some gun fever after that. And I started throwing another headlock and that one was failed. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Uh, I put myself down in that point, but I was, I wasn't worried. I mean, I just had to keep going forward and, and trying to make some shots and, you know, they just didn't come. And so I, uh, 
you know, I put myself out there. I, I tried to be, you know, offensive and just didn't work out at that point. But I mean, I don't think I would feel any different if I got third or I got fourth. So it, it didn't really matter much to me. I didn't really think over that loss. Do you ever swear? Swear uh, in the practice room? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. so I, know, I, I didn't know after a loss. I don't know. Do you get mad? Do you yell? Do you swear? Or do you just go uh, quiet to yourself? My go-to is usually um, I usually take my straps off and lay down somewhere and just put my shirt over my face, just because. I mean, you put yourself through so much emotion. Uh, I mean, it's not like I cry or anything. It's just like I don't need people seeing me like this. And so, usually take five minutes, you know, lay down, put a shirt over my face, and usually I think your thoughts can kind of come back to you after five or 10 minutes. And I think I've been pretty good at that, but I mean, this sport's totally insane. If you think about it. So, I mean, if you go into the practice room, don't bring a mic in there. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first year your recruit recruiting class was all in the lineup at the same time, yourself, Tariq, Daniel and Thomas Bullard and Nick Renan. And it was the number one recruiting class coming out of high school and all five of you guys made it to the NCAAs. And, Going back to recruiting visits, the red shirt circuit, how rewarding is it that all of you guys are accomplishing this as a group? It's really cool. I, I think we haven't really like had that signature moment as our recruiting class. And I think guys are ready to make that. I mean, we're still a little bit young this year. I mean, this was the first year that we were all in the lineup together. And we had to form a little bit of a new identity with all those guys, you know, leaving. And uh, you know, I, th I think we did well to taking that first step. Our NCAA performance didn't really show that, but I think we took a big step this year as when it comes to leadership and who needs to step up and everybody's roles. And so I think next year is the year where we get to combine a little bit of our experience now. There, there's no excuse for us to not be experienced. You know, we're juniors and we've had time on the mat. We've all been starters. And so there's no excuses to why we can't make something happen at the end of the year. And the way I look at it, it's a, very similar to my redshirt freshman year. We had the year before, we didn't have a great NCAA performance. We had one All-American, which was Kevin, and they finished 16th or 17th. And the next year, they came back with a vengeance, and we had, you know, four or five All-Americans. And so um, I think we're ready to take that next step this year. I think we've got a combination of that of my brother's recruiting class who are hungry and they want to prove themselves. And then we have guys that are experienced and feel like they have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. I think once those two mesh, I think we can be a really dangerous team. And I'm looking forward to seeing that, you know, happen next year. Care to start any rumors, any movement in weight classes for you? No, <laughs> no. I, uh, I'm a very good size. Career, 157. Career 157. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, uh, you know, I I might be a little bit light for my weight class, but I'm the strongest guy, so I don't I don't worry about weight a whole lot. And so, 157 is good for me. And moving into the off season, it's already been a couple of weeks since the NCAAs. What does your spring and summer look like in freestyle? Well, last year when I came off of NCAA's, I I mean I had a really um, good year last year in terms of like you know, I didn't face a whole lot of adversity, and so I I just worked super hard and did everything right. And then I, I, mean, I got second and then I came back the next day. I'm like, all right, let's just go to freestyle and let's do this thing. And so I didn't realize the kind of toll that a season will take on your body. And so, I mean, I didn't, I maybe took like a, two or three days off and was back in the room getting ready for the U S open. Mm -hmm. Cause at that point I hadn't qualified for trials. And that was, I was like, all right, I mean, I, I lost at NCAAs. I might as well make a world team. And so I just went right back into it. And I got to a point where at the, I was maybe five days out of the U.S. Open. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to go there because I was like, I spent three or four weeks training and it was awful. I looked terrible. Um, I got out of NCAAs and thought that everything was just going to click the way it did. And, you know, I go into practice and my body starts hurting. I start getting some like just, you know, some aches around my body and my wrestling looked terrible. I was getting beat in the room all the time. And I was like sitting down the coach and I'm like, man, should I, do I even want to do this? I, I feel like I just put myself you know, through too much this, this past few weeks. And I don't, I don't want to go out there and get embarrassed in Vegas. And I mean, the coaches were like, I mean, uh, they were almost at the point where like, yeah, I don't think you should really do that. Just folk try to focus on you 23s. But, you know, I talked to my dad and he's thinking, you know, he tells me you're a lot better than you think you are. And, you know, all your life, you've just ran right to the challenge. And so you just got to go out and do it. 
And so I went to the open and I mean, I looked pretty good. I got second and I got a lot of good experience from that and then turned around and went to the trials, turned around, went to U23s. And so at that point I was totally cooked. Uh, I think at, in that three match series against Deacon, the fact that I was able to pull through in that match three, I don't know. That was not technique. There was not skill involved. It was just pretty much just grit. And I just didn't want to do all this work that off season to lose there. And so this year I'm in a little bit different position. I've qualified for the trials. And so, I mean, I don't want to go to the open again. I don't want to put myself through that like what I did last year. And so right now I'm just, you know, I'm getting back into things. I'm not going crazy, kind of like I have been in the past. Um, I'm just trying to peak for the world team trials. And so that's a really cool feeling to have because I felt like last year I was a little bit rushed in my preparation. You know, you spend all these months doing freestyle, I mean, folk style. And then you go to the open and these guys have been wrestling freestyle for years. And so, I mean, it, it was, it was a tough challenge for last year, but I learned a lot. And, you know, I feel like I'm in a better spot this year to peak at trials. And like you said, you've already qualified for the world team trials because you were on the U23 world team and growing up in Pennsylvania and just all of your USA wrestling experience prior to now, how big of a deal is it for Reynolds Coliseum to be hosting the world team trials in May? It's really cool. I, I think. Growing up in Pennsylvania, I mean, wrestling's all year round sport. No matter where you go in each month, there's always going to be tournaments everywhere. And, uh, I think with Raleigh hosting, I think that's a big step for our program and just being able to showcase that, yeah, we're a really great wrestling environment. And if we get a good turnout, you know, they might recon- like consider us for an NCAA championships in, in the future. And we all know Reynolds is just top of the notch and i think it'll be a really great host and i think guys are going to be surprised i think you're going to get guys from the midwest that are going to come down here and be like wow we should have been doing this a long time ago and you know i I think raleigh is just a beautiful area and um i'm really looking forward to having a little bit of a home crowd advantage and you know at the end of the day you're going to be wrestling guys that are doing this professionally and have been wrestling freestyle and so you know, I'm gonna have to bring a really good game to to beat those guys, but it's gonna be really cool being in Reynolds. I've asked a lot of our guests this past season to give us a scouting report on some of the freshmen that redshirted and that they've worked with in the practice room. You obviously you have a 20 year scouting report on your brother Trent. A uh, big birthday shout out there! Yep. But tell our friends what can they expect seeing Trent next season? What type of wrestler? What type of style will Wolfpack fans see from him this year? I think you're gonna see a different style. I think. Um, the two of us, a lot of us, I mean, a lot of people want to compare us just because, you know, we wrestle similarly and, you know, we both like to be out of underhooks, but personality wise, it very far ends of the spectrum. I think just, um, he's much more outgoing, I would say, and has a great sense of humor and is not really afraid to let his personality show. And me, I would say I have much more dry sense of humor and, um, I like my privacy for the most part, but uh, I think you'll see that in his wrestling. He brings a lot of emotion to the mat. And, you know, when he wins, you're going to see some some great celebrations. You're going to see a lot of, you know, a fiery competitive attitude. And I think people love that. I think, um, you know, we both train the same way and we both work the same way. It's just, you know, how we are and how we've come to be. But I think you're going to see a lot of explosion, a lot of athleticism, some that I wish I had. I think growing up, um, he was two years younger than me and I was always able to kind of, you know, big brother him and, and most things. But in terms of overall athleticism, he's, he's got me beat. So I've kind of have to, I've had to change my game over the past few years just to be able to beat him. But, uh, when was I'm, the last time you two went live? I want to say it was probably last summer. I, it, during my summers, I don't, it's weird because during the season, you're pretty much wrestling 49, 57, or 65 guys. But during the summer, I don't really care too much. I I like to wrestle the bigger guys. And so whenever he first got on campus, I probably wrestled him, I don't know, a few times um, during live goes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to kind of beat him in, in ways that, you know, nobody else can just because I, I know his wrestling really well and I'm able to you know, pick and, and choose the, the battles that I want to fight with him. But um, I don't have any desire to wrestle him now. <laughs> I think with his his weight advantage and his added strength throughout this redshirt year, no, I, I'll pass. If 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 we're too 
if we're the only two ones left in the room and they need partners, I'll I'll take somebody else. I was going to say, not even here at NC State, but when did you have that oh crap moment where he might be younger than me, but he's really, he's not a little brother anymore? Well, he's got this great takedown where he can kind of go out from the open and, and just kind of explode right through you. And I mean, I always know it's coming, but I think one time in high school, I had defended that. And then next thing you know, he, he went to his next offense and just kind of skied me through the air and put me down. And I was like, Oh, all right. <laughs> this isn't how I thought it was going to go. And then I think this fall when we were drilling, I just, it was like an off day and we came in, we're drilling with each other. And, um, you know, he got this, one of his attacks and he didn't realize his weight that he had on me and he put me to the ground. And I just, <laughs> I mean, I, it just, you know, the wind went right out of me and then he looked at me, he's like, Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was that big. And so whenever we drill together now, it's, it's usually more of like a spar, like where, uh, he's given some kind of percentage and I'm, uh, using my weight just because, I mean, there's a big disadvantage now in terms of that. What's it? You have 30 pounds on you right now? Yeah. Yeah. Probably 30. And I'll get you out of here in this. I saw it advertised this weekend. You're going to go help a free clinic in Greensboro. How much fun do you have working those kind of events in the NC State summer camps, interacting with kids? They all know who you are now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool that, that to know who I am. And obviously, it's not always been like that. I think when I first came to NC State and I was working that summer camp, I remember the little kids just got on me just because they didn't know who I was. And I was just like one of the red shirts. And like those little kids can be ruthless sometimes. And <laughs> I can specifically remember these kids just like untying my shoelaces all the time. And it just used to drive me absolutely nuts. And, you know, these kids would get in like groups of five or six and just jump on my back. And I mean, at that point, there's not much you can do. And you just, I mean, it's not like you're going to, you know, go full <laughs> torque on a bunch of like 10 year old kids. And then, you know, the funny thing is, the next summer I come in to run these camps you know, not one kid is screwing with me after they, you know, kind of know my name. Right. And I mean, I, I love working with kids and um, I might be a little bit more quiet, but I feel like I'm a really good teacher. And I like going around North Carolina and spreading the word about wrestling just because there's so much untapped potential here. It's not a, you know, a powerhouse wrestling state, but there's just so many good athletes here. And, and I, I want to be the, you know, be the guy to kind of spread it around. And I know we've had really good guys on our team that have served that role, especially guys like Mock, who, you know, have shown that, you know, North Carolina wrestlers can reach the top of the podium and, and the highest pinnacle in the sport. And so, you know, for me, I'm, I'm always willing to give my time and on the weekends and whenever I have some time off, you know, I, I have a good relationship with Dark Horse Wrestling Club in Charlotte. And so I'm there quite a bit and I've got to form relationships with those kids and their parents. And it's an awesome setup here in North Carolina. There's, it's growing, you know, very rapidly and, you know, I think NC State's been a big part of that, and so I'm I'm glad to be a part of that too. Two very different styles when it comes to camp counselor. Who's better, you or Renan? <laughs> um, Renan knows how to implement scare tactics in kids. <laughs> um, he he tries to make himself out to be more mean of a person than he actually is. Um, I think for the guys that know Renan, we know that deep down he. You know, he wants best for everybody. He he keeps a very um, jagged appearance on the outside. And uh, it's just, I think that's his sense of humor. And it's funny to see him work with kids just because, you know, the first moment that, that he starts yelling around to get the drill started, these kids just look at him like a deer in the headlights <laughs> and they're just start sprinting to, to do whatever he says. And it's like, for the rest of us, we just look at it and laugh just because we know that they have no idea about this guy. Hayden is glad, you know, Great to catch up with you after a workout. Uh, in season is always exciting, but the World Team Trial is only a few weeks away in Reynolds. A lot of people going to be watching. Good luck to you and all of your teammates as you guys go in this next freestyle. Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you for having me on. And I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State Wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack Wrestling fans, go Pack! Podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to matttalkonline.com.